Following our free educational materials, you learn English in a great way with ease and efficiency. You have been here for how long? Four months now? Yeah, about. Do you know Chinese better now? Oh, definitely. I remember. When I first arrived in Guangzhou, my girlfriend was haggling with a sales clerk over the price of a mobile phone. Oh, yeah. Many Chinese like to bargain. It happens almost everywhere. I mean, I understand that. But the speed of the conversation got faster and faster, until it seemed to me that they would fight. My perception of the tone was that it was a violent shouting match. The truth was that it was a perfectly normal conversation. A shouting match? You're so funny. You must be exaggerating. I don't believe it. I am not exaggerating at all. I'm telling you the truth. That was how I felt at that time. Yes, perhaps. Chinese usually don't notice that sort of thing. Maybe it's quite natural to us. Yes, absolutely true. Alice, your father is amazing. He's 90 years old and he lives alone in that big house. I know. He doesn't like to ask anyone for help. My dad insists on paying his own bills and taking care of himself. That sounds like my grandmother. She was always stubbornly independent. It seems that folks like my father and your grandmother are determined to be on their own. They see their independence as a kind of character strength. Sometimes they are too independent. Did you get a nice tree? Sure did. It's a beauty. Where do you want it? Let's put it over there. Let's go to work. We want to have the tree ready to light up by evening. Let's string the lights first. Then we won't have to mess up the decorations. Hand me some globes and paper flowers. I'll put them on these top branches. There, we're about done. Let's switch the lights on. Okay, here goes. Well, I guess we're all set for another Merry Christmas. Come on, fellows. Let's enjoy my wife's cooking. M, it's delicious. Thank you. My wife likes cooking very much. You're lucky. I don't think the manager will get mad at you for being late. I don't know about that. I'm really fed up with Larry. He's the biggest airhead I've ever met. He always makes careless mistakes, and he's a pain to work with. You shouldn't be so negative. You'll always have some co-workers that are harder to work with than others. But if you are negative and start name-calling in the office, it will make a bad working environment for everybody. You only say that because you don't have to work with him. The people in your department seem so capable and nice to be around. Take Mary, for example. She's smart and enthusiastic. I've never met anyone as cheery as she is. Everybody has their strengths and weaknesses. Even Larry. He might be a pain to be around, but he's also very good at staying in budget on projects. Mary, on the other hand, spends our project money like there's no tomorrow. Also, she's never willing to stay a little later at the office. She always leaves at 5 p.m. sharp. Isn't there anyone in the office that is a perfect co-worker? What about Bob? Everybody loves Bob. Even though he's flesh out of college and still a bit green, he is a great co-worker. You're right. He's a hard worker. 
easy to get along with, honest, and he never steals the credit on projects. The only thing he's lacking in is experience. Maybe that's why he's so nice. I'm leaving now, Mum. Take care, Sonny. I will. Bye. 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 He has a girlfriend already. You were kidding. He just broke up with Anne. His new girlfriend is a far cry from Anne. She is like a breath of fresh air. I hope I will meet her soon. You are friend of Janet, right? I am Andrew, Andrew Smith. Nice to meet you, Andrew. I am Norrin, Norrin O'Neill. I'm sorry. I didn't quite catch that. Norrin, N-O-I-R-I-N. It's an Irish name. Is learning the English language your toughest challenge yet? Become our student and get access to effective and free educational materials.